here before you even wake up, we're creating a fundamental change in news coverage, laying the foundation and setting the standard. And this is just the beginning. Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production where we extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests that we can find. We like to call them tech athletes here at the ESPN of tech. I'm Dave Vellante, and I'm with my co-host, Jeff Frick. Jeff, we've been here all day. It's quite um, a day. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Carl Vandenberg is here, VP of Products at Jaspersoft uh, and Alliances as well. So, uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, so good event, right? I mean, I don't know if you were at reInvent. Uh, I was. You were, so yeah. this is a little more intimate, but, yeah. uh, but nonetheless, big. really big and growing. Yeah. Great, great events here that they, they do. So tell us about what you're doing here and what your AWS angle is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, let me introduce JasperSoft briefly. Please, yeah. So JasperSoft is a uh, commercial open source business intelligence provider. Uh, we have about 200 people headquartered here in San Francisco with offices around the world. And um, our focus is what we call the intelligence inside. So there's a lot of BI providers out there. Um, and uh, so, you know, what's unique about JasperSoft? And as I said, it's the intelligence inside. So what do I mean by that? Essentially, when you look at the business intelligence market, uh, according to IDC, last year we spent about $34 billion on business intelligence. And yet when you read the analyst reports, we're still at only about 25% penetration of business users actually using BI. Uh, and in a world that competes on time and information, that, that seems strange, right? We've got the money, we're spending the money, but we're not getting the adoption. And our belief is the fundamental problem is that most business users do not spend their day inside a BI system, nor do they want to. Um, they spend their day in a CRM app or an ERP or productivity suite, you name it, they've got their preferred app. So our mission is to bring information or intelligence inside the applications where people spend their day. We call that the intelligence inside and we do that for companies like Red Hat um, where they embed JasperSoft's reporting server and analytics server inside their enterprise virtualization product. Uh, we do it for companies like British Telecom that build it inside an internal application uh, for call center management, or for a company like uh, Virgin Money that uh, builds this into a multi-tenant cloud uh, application where charities can um, sign up and help monitor and manage their fundraising. So that is, uh, that is JasperSoft, and uh, we today power about 130,000 applications worldwide in production. Um, we have a community of about 350,000 members, and we have 18,000 customers um, who bought services or support or documentation from us, of which about 1,800 are um, subscribed to the uh, annual subscription we have for our platform. So that's, that's ja JasperSoft in, in a nutshell. And um, what we're doing here is uh, we, about two months ago, launched a new offering on AWS Marketplace. And um, there are a number of reasons for that. First and foremost though, as I said, because our mission is the intelligence inside, we're essentially targeting IT and developers who are building business intelligence into their applications. So where is, where is uh, cloud app, where is application development going today? Application development and deployment is moving to the cloud. And so we see our customers and community moving to the cloud. And our mission is to become essentially the de facto BI, reporting and analytics service, part of every cloud application. So we, we uh, launched JasperSoft for AWS two months ago. And um, it's a first for the BI industry in that 
We introduced, along with the offering, the first time you can buy BI exclusively by the hour. So no by user BI limits. By the hour. Okay. No, no user limits, no data limits, no additional monthly fees. Starting at 40 cents an hour, you can buy a full reporting dashboards and analytics server. Um, and so this is a disruptive move. And in the two months since we've launched, we've uh, had 200 customers purchase our product. So for a BI product, 200 customers in two months is pretty impressive. So we think we've, we're onto a good thing. So you essentially embed BI into the app, essentially the, the, the business user doesn't even know he or she is using BI, they're just getting it. Right. They're just getting it. It's a fundamental part of their workflow. Exactly. And Gartner, in fact, in one of their uh, 2013 trends, talked about actionable or invisible analytics. And the point about the invisibility is that, as you said, business users don't even realize they're using BI. And for me, we only get to pervasive BI when business users don't know they're using a BI system. It's embedded inside the applications that they work in every day. So which apps are, are hot? You know, what are you seeing out there? Well, um, I can tell you it's pretty much across the board um, and it depends on the industry, but of course, marketing apps, sales apps, things where the functions are common to pretty much every organization. Uh, are, are popular, but then, you know, the most random vertical apps as well, uh, where every day I'll see a customer from a, uh, a different industry or the latest startup that will be using Jaspersoft as part of their application. But it's not um, exclusively, of course, embedded inside what we think of a commercial application. Many times companies will embed uh, Jaspersoft inside their corporate internet portal. So it's embedded in a portal, and it's easier for users to reach, but it's not what we think of as a traditional application. That also, for me, counts as part of this intelligence design. And, and Carl, your business model is to sell service, and you're on top of open source software, you're selling support and service and a subscription. Right, right? the subscription is, so it's a good clarification because um, we have what we call an open core uh, model, which is base functionality available for free, um, and then we sell essentially a subscription to advanced functionality. Yeah, okay. And it, with support and indemnification on top of it. And it's that version of the product that we've made available on the Amazon market. Open core and, and yeah. you probably don't like the term freemium, but many people that resonates yeah, with Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like the open source is the free bit and then yeah. the, the, the paid bit is the, uh, the subscription. Okay, so in AWS Marketplace, uh, you're charging for that, that, that premium component. Right. Or I can, can I get the, the open core you, as well? You, you can get the open source version as well. Yeah. And Amazon's cool with that because they're not, they're, take, they're, taking, no, because, they're because taking 20% of zero? Is that, <laughs> well, and they're getting paid for their infrastructure. They're getting paid for their infrastructure. It's all good for Amazon and uh, because every time someone launches our free stuff, they're paying for the EC2 charges. Right. So, um, yeah, so it, I mean, we're really excited about this partnership with Amazon. They have been a really incredible support in terms of promoting this because they understand that we're offering something that's also good for their customers. We, uh, we did a lot to um, make this as appealing as possible to the AWS customers. And um, part of that was product integration. So we actually built a custom version of our server to work with AWS. And the way that it works is when you launch it, we use CloudFormation templates that pick up your security provisioning from AWS. And so it will automatically go out and discover any AWS data sources you have, like RDS or Redshift, and it will connect you to those data sources. So you can literally, and we've timed this, you can literally press a button to purchase Jaspersoft and be analyzing data using our data visualization in-memory engine on top of Redshift in nine minutes. Nine so minutes. Nine minutes from purchase to analysis of data in uh, your Redshift data warehouse or your RDS Oracle or... And I can just server. analyze it for as long as I need to analyze it and then turn it back off again. You can turn it back off, yeah. It's, it's good for bursty workloads, it's good for tests and dev, it's good for production. So we have customers like Click Travel that are already in production that are using us and are thrilled with the experience. Can you talk about the, 
the role that Jaspersoft played in helping Amazon understand what kind of infrastructure to deploy for your application. I mean, there's, you got unique attributes, you've got a yeah. specific, specific workload, you, you've got maybe a spectrum of infrastructure requirements. How does it know how to yeah. configure the system the way that you need it configured? And what role did you play in that? Yeah, so, I mean, they, we, it was a back and forth dialogue. Um, and uh, we, we use tools that they provide, like, as I mentioned, CloudFormation, uh, which is these templates, essentially, that allow you to dynamically set up an AMI uh, to the configurations that you specified, along with security provisioning. So there are a lot of best practices, so we talk to their, what they call their SAs, or solution architects, um, to understand what were the best practices and what was the best way to integrate. Um, and our server is, um, it's a B, full BI server, but it's fairly uh, tight in terms of its uh, complexity. So it's a Java app, essentially, a Java server. So we didn't have particularly complicated needs, but that uh, integration was done through this CloudFormation template, and that was, uh, we worked closely with the SAs on that. Did any of your existing customers uh, who have JasperSoft in production. Yes. Have any of them migrated their apps onto the cloud? Some of them have. Yeah. Some of them have. Um, uh, so they, um, in some cases, it's the functionality they have. We don't have all the functionality on, on the hourly offering. Okay. Uh, we have our essentially we have three versions of our server. We have Express. Pro and Enterprise. Pro is the most common. Uh, about 80% of our customers buy that, and that functionality is what's available by the hour. Okay. The Enterprise features, though, um, like OLAP for advanced audit logging, is not available as part of, or advanced CTL is not part of that. And um, so, for customers with that functionality, they can't move to the hourly offering. Now, they can move to AWS because you know they can deploy our license there, bring your own license and deploy their Yami. Right, Miami. right. Um, but to your point, some customers have moved from an annual subscription to the hourly offering because it allows them more flexibility. Carl, can you talk some more about the visualization component of your product? I mean, it's obviously, all, all big data is all the rage, visualization is a major piece of that, and the, the meme around that is basically, We've got to get business users using yeah. you know, our products. Visualization's a key to that. You saw a big you know, blockbuster IPO by Tableau. Yeah. Uh, many, many others coming out, competing with Tableau. Uh, talk about visualization, the role that it plays, and the unique aspects of Jaspersoft's visualization components. Yeah. No, visualization is a, um, is a real breakthrough in terms of allowing more business users to understand their data. Uh, pictures were the third thousand words, as they say. Um, and it's true for visualization and BI. What we're doing at Jaspersoft, I think that is fundamentally different. Um, when you look at where, I would say, the data visualization players are today, they're largely targeted at a data scientist audience. Uh, they are desktop based in terms of their uh, because they're looking at the desktop as a great way to provide the requisite power to the data scientists to do their workloads. And it's a great market. I mean, clearly it's basically targeting the Excel jockey and moving them up to a data visualization uh, metaphor. But we've taken it from a different angle where, as I said, our idea is that we want BI to be more pervasive. We want it to be invisible to the users. We want it to be embedded inside their applications. In order to do that, you have to have a 100% web-based architecture. And so we've essentially taken the power of data visualization on the desktop and we've brought it to the HTML5 web. So we've built our data visualization using HTML5 inside a browser. So you get all that data visualization power um, that you have on desktop visualization tools, but now in a browser that you can then embed inside your application. And we've shown that awesome. if you go to our site, you can look at a five minute demo and you'll see data visualizations running on top of Redshift. We have about a billion rows of data in Redshift. We should, doing our data we should do that demo in the cube. You know, we love visualization demos on the, uh, on the cube. How about Definitely. Hadoop? Is there any particular Hadoop integration that you guys are doing? Yeah. Yeah, we, we do the standard uh, Hadoop through Hive integration uh, that most BI providers. We do something else that's unique, um, and it's uh, an aspect of our architecture 
which is it's a data, data agnostic architecture. So we can talk with uh, BI, traditional BI players uh, will only talk SQL. We can talk non-SQL. So what I mean by that is in the Hadoop framework, you also have HBase, which is a key value store like Cassandra. Mm -hmm. yep. And we can talk directly to HBase. And the good thing about that is if you've got data in HBase, there's no latency. Hive is a high latency environment. Although there are obviously projects out there like Impala that are looking to solve that problem. But if you've got your data in HBase, it's very fast response time. And so we can talk directly as well to HBase and get answers from HBase. Right. How about any thoughts on DynamoDB? DynamoDB is a great product and it's definitely on our roadmap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean it critique wise, I mean in terms of integrating. So that's something that you guys will do, right? I mean, yeah. we've had some you know, folks in our community, you know, we love HBase, you know. We're, but you know, there's there's resources required. It's complex, yeah. you know. And yeah. DynamoDB is available as a service. It's, yeah. It simplifies There's a lot things. of appeal to a managed service for that type of uh, data store, and so um, that is a, a next logical progression for us. Outstanding. All right, Carl. Listen, we're getting the hook. I really appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing the JasperSoft story. And uh, yeah, it was a real pleasure. It was great to meet you. All Thanks right, stop by the queue. Thank you. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We're here. With Silicon Angles, the Cube. We'll be right back after this word. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. There are plenty of tech shows that provide new gadgets and talk about the latest in gaming, but those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. There's a difference between technology consumers and those who live the